Hi, this is Stephen Kern, and this screencast is part of our Hyperledger Identity course posted on edX. In this session, we'll look at browsing information on an indie ledger, looking at DIDs, schema, credential definitions, and other info. We're specifically going to be looking at the Sovereign production ledger, called Sovereign's mainnet, which is a live global instance of Hyperledger indie ledger. For this demo, we're using a site called indiescan.io to look at the ledger. On an indie ledger, there is no query or discovery service to use with the ledger itself. You have to know about an entry on the ledger to use it. However, you can read the entire ledger and save it to a database so you can search a copy of the ledger. That's done by contacting a node running the ledger and incrementally requesting every transaction ever written to the ledger. A service like indiescan.io starts by querying for tra transaction zero, then one, then two, and so on until it reads past the end of the current set of transactions. It stores all the records in a database and presents a nice user interface on a website that you can use to browse and search the transactions. Stay up to date. Every few minutes, indiescan.io contacts the Sovereign mainnet again and asks for the latest set of transactions. Once you find a transaction on indiescan, you can query the ledger itself to make sure that the information is accurate. Let's take a look. The Indy ledger is actually made up of three separate ledgers. The domain transactions ledger contains the DIDs, the credential schema, the credential definitions, the schema, and so on. The pool transaction, the pool ledger, tracks all of the nodes that are writing to the ledger, the participants in the verification system, in the verification process and consensus. And finally, the configuration ledger keeps track of when upgrades occur, um, changes to the algorithms and so on, adding and removing nodes from the actual consensus algorithm. So let's take a look at mainnet. Notice that we can also look at sovereign staging net and builder net as well. We're going to focus on the domain uh, ledger and so let's take a look at it. So when we click on that we see there are currently about 53,000 records we can scan through each one. Here are the list of ones. And when we can filter on the different types, what we're going to discover is that some types are used a whole lot more than others and some very few. Um, first off, you'll notice right off that attrib is used lots. It's written a lot. It's the most common one by far. Um, it's used primarily by the operators, by the sovereign stewards to keep track of um, making sure that the, the network, the ledger is working and every once in a while to run high volume test cases. So that's why you see frequently um, every 15 minutes, in fact, an attribute is written to the ledger to make sure everything's working regardless of what other activity. NIMs are what, were, uh, are, what are actually now called DIDs. So when Indy started, um, they were called cryptonyms. Um, so they use the word NIM for those. Um, those will change in the near future to be called DIDs. So if we click on that, we filter down, we only see the DIDs. We see that there's actually only 155 DIDs as of now on the ledger. So relatively small. And that's because the only, on Sovereign, the only uh, DIDs that are necessary are those of the issuers. If I, can, if I click on one and I was involved in the creation of this, this is a, an organization within the BC government. Um, there's a bunch of data in here and I, I'm not going to go through all the details, but I will point out that this actually is the DID itself. This is the name of the DID. This is the role of that um, DID's owner. And this is the public key, the ver key behind it. So that's um, where it came from. This is actually a, um, an organization within BC Gov. Coming back to here, we'll turn off the NIM and now turn on schema. There is, again, a small number of schema, and that's because only issuers that, have, um, uh, that are issuing credentials need to have a schema, and there's relatively few of those still. Again, coming back here, October 3rd, this was when uh, the schema for that BC government organization wrote theirs. Um, they're issuing licenses, so there's the license information and um, the name of the uh, of the credential definition or the uh, schema that's being used. If I come back, I can look at what are called credential definitions here. They're called claim definitions. Again, early confusion on the term claim and credential. Clicking on that, we've got 65 of those for the 65 issuers. I can come back to our October 3rd dates and look at the credentials that were issued by that organization in BC Gov. And so here's what they're using. Um, protocol version. We could actually tie this back. If we look closely, we'll find that there's a link here to um, uh, the schema that's being used and the uh, 
issuer did, the did of the issuer that's um, going to be issuing this credential. So that's most of the things you'll, we're, we're looking for. Currently, I checked recently, there's still no re revocation registries or definitions on the ledger. That's because no one is yet issuing credentials that can be revoked. Um, so that covers um, all, uh, all of the transactions that you'll find on the main net of Indy. Now, once you come, when you come here, you'll find the transactions list is different because of course, um, every time you come, there's a new set of transactions that have been added. And that's taking a look at what's on a Hyperledger Indy ledger.